what's going on? Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It is fucking Monday, everybody. And people, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great, guys. Fucking fantastic. So uh, I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, yeah, man. Welcome back. Welcome back to Medicaid Sports Talk. Um, it was a good NFL draft weekend. Um, LeBron James made it past Game 7, so we don't have to talk about him possibly leaving um, for right now. Um, yeah, man. Um, good weekend, you know. Um, I actually went to the dispensary, fucking got some new shit. Definitely has helped my anxiety and lifted my mood a lot. Definitely has helped with my depression. Um, I will say anxiety is a fucking bitch, and if you don't have it, um, you're very blessed. It sucks dick, dude. It's horrible. It's like way worse than depression. Like I wish I had depression 24-7 than having anxiety any day of the week. And when I suffer from both. So I mean, it's just like fuck. And like I've been using some CBD stuff. Like the tinctures you put like under, you know, like under your tongue. And it's got CBD in it. It's great. You know, I've been using this stuff called ACDC, man. Been using it going for a run. Um, don't get high, you just level, clear-headed, you know, especially, like, with the anti-inflammatory stuff in it, you know, you got, that's good for the run, you know, instead of taking the Advil, um, put some ointment on my freaking ankle, I ran three miles pain-free when I couldn't even run a mile the other day, I mean, this thing's, it's, it's incredible, like, what this stuff can do, um, and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I gotta say, um, I mean, if you're listening, obviously, it's, you know, Medicaid Sports Talk, baby. We uh, we just medicate, and then we go talk. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what us people do. Um, so, um, here we go, people. I am going to be finishing off the NFL season, hopefully soon, with these top three games of each week to look forward to. Um, definitely excited about, like, this list and finishing it off, and... You know, it's exciting, like, looking at each week and just being like, damn, there's so many games to choose from. So, like, I feel like sometimes, like, I'm picking the Cowboys or, like, I'm picking, like, Patriots or, like, the Jacksonville too many times. And then it's just like, I mean, but that is, like, the top game to be, like, looking for. And, yeah, I mean, who knows what we're going to get. Like, my skip, like, my top three games for each week could change easily by what's so it's about to be may tomorrow holy shit um like it could change by july easily like like you know it's just like things move so quickly in the nfl and a day to day to day and um you just got to be on top of things and i mean i might like once i finish this like i might do one like a preseason one like before like before this actual season starts like in august and like just one segment just run through each each week the top three games just you know and because, like, for all we know, like, Baker Mayfield couldn't even be, could, could, like, he could get hurt. And then we have Tyrod Taylor starting. Or is Tyrod Taylor going to be starting and Baker Mayfield's going to come in, you know? Like, who knows how the Browns are going to run this, organ like, are going to do this. But they keep fucking up. And I think they're, like, kind of getting back. I think they're kind of getting on the right track. Uh, I mean, you know, especially with... Dude, they got Nick Chubb for a second-round pick. I mean, the 33rd pick in the NFL draft, the second round. That's it's basically a fucking first round pick. I mean, you're getting a second round value. You're getting first round value out of Nick Chubb. Granted, he had that serious knee injury, and like, you know what I'm saying? He still came back, and he's had a he had good he had a solid career at Georgia. And you're like, okay. So I guess that's not the right thing to say is first round value because running backs don't really go like that unless it's like the Saquon Barkley, you know, um, Ezekiel Elliott. Like running backs don't go like that anymore. Um, so I mean like he – that's a huge pickup for the Browns and it just would be fucking nice if they could just figure out how to make shit work. Now I'm not saying like these Browns are going to come in with rookies and like they're going to be the fab five like in the NCAA of basketball. But like they're definitely – I feel like they can go in and – make things happen and show potential and then show that they're not a fucking winless team and go in and win some ball games and then the next year and keep on moving and progressing like a normal team is supposed to do and it oh man I just like every segment I'm talking about just how frustrating it is I'm not even a fucking Browns fan 
and it's just a disgrace to the NFL and their fans and that home like that bit that fan base. It's pathetic. I'm just really hoping like it would be great to see like Baker Mayfield come in and just like Lee like like a Russell Wilson, just a franchise quarterback, you know, six foot and under. Dude, Russell Wilson's five ten. You know, and like all and they're saying like, oh, Baker Mayfield just doesn't have it, the height. Dude, Russell Wilson's five ten. He's smaller than Drew Brees, and honestly, dude, five fucking ten. Good gosh, like, dude, he has like proven all odds, and then like, um, I, well, I forget, I don't know how to say his name, dude. The guy with the one hand, Griffin. Um, pretty sure that's his last name. Shareem, I I'm sorry, I can't say, I don't know how to, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but that's such an, a fantastic story, and like, he's reunited with his twin brother in Seattle, and, man, Pete Carroll's the man, Pete Carroll is a fucking great coach, I mean, like I'm saying, like, he took Russell Wilson 5'10", and has made him an NFL champ, Super Bowl champion, went to the Super Bowl two times in a row, almost has a second Super Bowl instead of that throw, because of that throw, and, like, I mean, just success, success, success. And Russell Wilson continues to dominate. I mean, he doesn't obviously do it alone. It's Pete Carroll. Like, Pete Carroll has... Pete Carroll has a way with his players, and he gets along with everybody and just vibes with everyone and has a way to, like, make them play better, I feel like. All right, so anyways, week seven, people. Cowboys-Redskins. That's a rivalry game right there. And um, I'm fucking excited for that because it's just... All, like, it doesn't matter if... The Redskins are horrible, or the Cowboys are horrible, or they're both shitty, or they're both super good. It's just an intense game all around. I can't wait. Like, you know me. I Especially week seven, Um, you know, it's like, damn, what if it's like Cowboys 3-3, three and three, Redskins 3-3, three and three, or, you know, it's like, just, like, there's so many scenarios that just play out and can happen, and, dude, I love it, because it's just like week seven, it's like getting on later and later into the season. I was talking to my friend the other day, like, every game matters in the NFL. Like, if you go out and, like, they're always like, oh, statistics of, oh, teams that start 0-2 or, like, don't make the playoffs 70% of the time. Like, that's how in fucking important games matter in the NFL. You go out in the NBA and you're fucking playing 82 games. Dude, why? Why do you need 82 games? And it's, and then, and then... After the regular season, they're like, oh, regular season doesn't matter. This is the playoffs. Well, then what the fuck? Like, that's the shit I don't like. Like, you see NFL players going out there giving it all week in, week out. You know, they're not taking games off. They're not taking plays off. They're not, not doing this, not running that route because they're tired or they're just, you know, resting. I mean, and then the MLB, 100 and what, 82 games? And then hockey, like 90-some games or some shit like that? Why do you need this many games to determine who the fuck is the best team? It's so unnecessary in baseball. Dude, half those games don't even probably matter. I know that sounds like... I don't mean half. I'm going to say like 25% of the games. Like like in baseball, you can start 3-16 and 16 and you can get a fucking hot streak and go 21-16. and 16. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know how likely that shit is. But I'm saying like that can happen and you're like, oh, back in the lead. Or you know you're like... Slowly, like, 13 and 16, 13 and 17, 13 and 18, 14 and 18, 15 and 18, 16 and 18. And you're like, oh, just slowly creeping back up. But then the thing is, fucking four teams make the playoffs. What's up with that? That's so stupid. I mean, every game in the NFL matters. I mean, week two, week three, week four, week five. I mean, that's why it's, like, so much pressure on these players. And, I mean, it's fucked that, like, they're just, like, handing, like... You hear these NFL players just say, oh, um, they just hand candy out. They just hand these pills out like it's candy. And it's just like it's just completely destroying and ruining their bodies. And when they could be using cannabis to help preserve the brain, save the brain. And with all the medical benefits and the pain and just everything. And it's way safer. And people are dying from this shit. And it's just like, oh, here you go. Here you go. Just let them smoke some weed on the plane or something. Or give them an edible or give them some topical shit, man. I mean, these players are sacrificing week in, week out, and every game matters. And it's just like you're just letting them destroy their bodies. I mean, on top of, like, the CTE, especially, like, who knows? Instead of, like, giving them the opioids, you could just give them the cannabis, and they could use that. And, like, that might, like, lessen the CTE when your career is done. I mean, because if it's just... 
Anyways, that's shit. Uh, that's just something that needed to be said. Anyways, all right. Second game I'm looking forward to is definitely a uh, 49ers and the Rams. Rams versus the 49ers, so it's at 49ers. Um, obviously another 49er game. I mean a rivalry game. Um, I mean 49ers. I'm definitely really curious as to where they are in their progression. Are they? Are they like where they were last year? You know, when the, winning the six game streak and Jimmy Garoppolo is just the talk of the. The nation right now and you know like he's gonna he's like oh wow they shouldn't bell belichick should have never have given him up and you know or is it gonna be like he's doing okay but i don't think so i think like um crap john lynch is um definitely gonna change the culture he's he's changing the culture around there i believe um I'm curious as to, I think Jared Goff, he's not going to have a fall off. I think it's just going to be an outstanding battle. Um, I'm definitely excited. Yeah, the Rams have such a good, like, uh, they have a look good on paper defense. And it's going to be exciting to see, like, the matchups that the Rams can bring against the 49ers and how they can attack. Because, I mean, Pierre Garçon's a really good wide receiver. And, I mean, Jimmy G's good. I'm trying to think of who their other wide receiver is right now off the top of my head. Um, I can't write this second. Damn it. Why can't I? Um, but, yeah, like, I just think... I just think that the Jared Goff 49ers, that, like, the defense, um, it'll be, like, how do they present their defense to Jimmy? Can he read that defense? Can he change the plays? Will he make the right calls? Um, will that defense actually be that good as they look good on paper? I mean, sometimes it doesn't always work out like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, this is just crazy. So, like, this is what I'm saying. Like, I'd be putting the Browns on here because I'm excited. I mean, I think it's huge that they have Josh Gordon and Javaris Landry. Now they have Nick Chubb. Um, they've got fucking Tyrod Taylor as a quarterback option or Baker Mayfield. Um, that's better than, you know, a lot of options. I don't know how Baker Mayfield is, obviously, but in college, great. Um, so I'm going to go with the Browns and Bucks, man. Um, I think the Browns versus Bucks is a fucking good game to look forward to. Say, like, the Browns are, like, what? Say they've won f four games. Say they've won three games. Say they're three and three, you know, or two and four. You know, like... That's, that's fucking decent, man. I mean, they won fucking zero games last year. And, I mean, with the Bucks and Jameis Winston. And, I mean, Jameis Winston looks like a franchise quarterback. But, like, he has, like, these moments and these games. And you're just like, hmm. You're better than that, Jameis. You are. Because Jameis is a good player. He's smart. And when I watch him play, I'm excited because he's actually, like, an exciting player. I remember watching his first fucking game at Florida State. And I'm like, who is this guy? You know, they're talking about like, oh, he played baseball and he's a true freshman. Right? Or I think he might have been a red shirt. Um, and I'm just like, damn, like, you know, like I just got to witness Johnny Manziel like for two years and. Oh, actually, it, but was he? Did they play the same college year? I think they might have. I'm not sure. I can't remember. That was a little bit ago. But like, I just remember watching Johnny Manziel and then it's like, I see Jameis Winston. And I swear, like, this was, like, his first one of his first throws. He, like, drops back, five-step drops back, and just fucking beams this ball. Like, drills it right on target. Man running, like, a fucking slant route, but, like, a deep slant route, like, into the middle of the field, like, at least, like, 30 yards, and just fucking nails it. And, like, in between two defenders, too. And I'm like, yo, this shit's, nah, nah. And, like, he just, like, the whole game continued and continued and continued and i was just like dude who is this guy and i mean obviously he eventually went up heisman but like i just remember watching him i was like dude this guy is gonna be fucking amazing and i mean obviously he had all that shit with the fucking like rape and the crab crab legs like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> but other than that excuse me jeez that's embarrassing fuck Dude, I think Jameis is a franchise quarterback. I think he can lead that team to, like, I don't know, not a Super Bowl. But he can definitely lead that, lead that team to, like, deep playoff runs. I mean, especially with, like, Mike Evans. I, I'm excited. So I got to go with Browns and Bucks, all right? And then with Week 8, I'm going to go with uh, Eagles and Jags as my first game. And, you know, it's a London game. And London games are always, like, 
I don't know, man. Is this shit going to be fucking good? You know, you wake up early and it's like a fucking blowout. And you're just like, dude, this is dumb. Like, I woke up early. You know, it's 38 to 7. Like, what the fuck? I don't want to watch this. But I think, like, Eagles-Jags, that's actually a good London matchup. I mean, Jacksonville with that top defense. And um, hopefully Blake Bortles is fucking doing good again because it's annoying to watch like a team sign a quarterback after only having one good season and then doing shit the next year and it's just like oh where's Blake Bortles and it's like what do you mean he's been butt the whole time he only had one good season (sighs) fucking people man NFL man they just don't know how to like judge talent I feel like and they just recycle old bums so hopefully Blake Bortles is playing good and I'm gonna, the next game I'm going for is uh, the Patriots versus the Bills. Dude, I, I feel like myself, I always sleep on those games. Like, I'm all, not like actual sleep, but like I just like don't pay attention to it. And then it ends up being like a fucking amazing game. And I'm just like, damn, I hate myself. I'm going to go, you know, that's a Monday night football game. Um, maybe Josh Allen will be starting. Um, I don't know. But, um... I think Patriots Bills with Josh Allen starting because I don't know who the else the hell who el- who the hell else is going to be their quarterback. It's not going to be that Nathan Peterman or whoever that bum is. Um, don't they have like Cordell Jones or some shit um, too, dude? Their their roster's horrible, horrible. Whew, man, I can't like it's just like like when they had Tyrod Taylor last year and their coach is like. Uh, let's 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 pull out fucking Tyrod Taylor. Put this Nathan guy in and fucking throws five picks in the first half. Like that's some Cleveland ass Brown shit. Who does that? Who? And then they're like, yeah, we're gonna go back to Tyrod Taylor. No fucking shit. Like, why would you take out Tyrod Taylor? Like, Tyrod Taylor's not like a fucking top ten quarterback. But I mean, Tyrod Taylor's gonna win you some football games. Like he's an athletic, competitive, natured, natured person winning type of style like QB like he wants to fucking win you know what I'm saying and I mean good gosh like I mean just these coaches some of them and like the man like I don't know man I'm not oh I'm heated I'm heated right now oh it's so it's so frustrating and like you just like are like how do you keep getting it wrong like every year I'm hoping Josh Allen just is fucking comes in and is a, a top top quarterback because I mean, these teams that don't have quarterbacks, it's so fucking annoying just watching and just being like the commentators year in and year out. Yeah, just quarterback play is just not that good this year. It's not good any year. Why can't you get it right, people? Get your shit together. All right. Next game. See, like, look, I'm putting the Redskins and uh, I'm putting the Giants back on here. So top, it's, um, I don't know what time this game is. I think it's actually a one o'clock game. But I'm going Redskins-Giants, all right? Rivalry game, you know. Um, Redskins D's weak unless they can fix shit up. I feel like with OBJ healthy, Saquon Barkley healthy, woo! Eli Manning healthy, woo! Eli Manning is going to go at least 375, three touchdowns. OBJ is going 150, two touchdowns. Dude, Saquon Barkley's running for 100, 110 yards, one touchdown. That's my ball prediction. All right, week nine, people. Lions Vikings, all right. Lions Vikings, you know, it's always a gritty matchup between these two fuckers. Um, they always go at it. They always fight. They don't like each other. It's kind of like, it's kind of like an Eagles Giants or like, you know, they just they fight. And then you know, Matt Stafford always plays. I feel like, I feel like Matt Stafford's gonna go off. You know, it might be at Vikings Stadium. Um. It might be against that Vikings defense, but I feel like Matt Stafford's going to go off. Matt Stafford's a great quarterback. He always puts up the numbers. He puts up the yards. He just doesn't have that winning resume, you know? It's like that Tony Romo shit. Like, you would you would just fucking watch him play, and you'd be like, dude, you put up such big numbers, and then, like, these big games or stuff like that. Like, when Tony Romo played Matt Stafford in the, in the playoffs, it was like, oh, wow, two two quarterbacks who just don't win playoff games and Tony Romo came out on top, but Matt Stafford's a good quarterback. Um, I think they just need a couple more pieces and I think they'll figure shit out. But I feel like Kirk Kirk Cousins will definitely torch that defense, though. Um, I feel like the Vikings will come out on top, too, but 
the Lions might pull that off with Matt Stafford. I don't know. That's just me. That's my gut feeling for right now. I mean, football's in eight months, you know, whatever. Um, the next game I'm looking forward to is Texans and Broncos, guy people. Like, dude, Deshaun Watson's nice. And I think if he comes in healthy, crushes it, you know, first few weeks, like, looks great. Um, doesn't look like he lost a step from last year. <sighs> Broncos defense better watch out. with, Especially, I mean, I know they have a good defense, but I think, man... I think like Deshaun Watson's gonna just pop off that game. I think he's gonna just start like he's gonna expose that defense. I mean, granted, like that team does not have an offense or a quarterback or anything right now. Oh shit! I forgot they have Case Keenum. I wonder how he's gonna be in that system. Hmm. That should actually okay. You know what? Case like Case Keenum's not a bad quarterback. Like he can, he's gonna give you production. He's gonna give you numbers. He can get you wins. Obviously, we've seen it. Um, but I feel like the um, Deshaun Watson's gonna expose that defense. I think he's, I think he's smart. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And then the last game I'm looking forward to that week of Week Nine is um, gonna be Packers Patriots. I mean Packers Patriots guys. Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Like, the Patriots defense could be ass, and the Packers defense could be ass. Or they both, like, or both defenses could be amazingly both one and two, you know? And the offenses are, you know, 10, like, 15th, both of them. Dude, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers going to go off. Um, those are the two best quarterbacks ever. I mean... Tom Brady's the best, obviously. I just feel like Tom Brady and just watch, just, like... Like, okay, so here it is. It's like, oh, Tom Brady goes off the field. You're like, oh, shit. Oh, damn. Like, I get to witness, like, another great quarterback and watch how he performs and watch the way he plays, and I get to witness this shit. It's awesome. Like, what? That's awesome. Like, it's not like, oh, Tom Brady goes off the field, and damn, I got to watch, um, I don't know. Let's look. That, the Nathan, the Nathan dude, Nathan, Nathan guy or whatever the fuck his name is from, um, the Buffalo. Like, you know, it's like a no-name dude. You know, you're just like, shit, this offense is ass. I don't want to watch this. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to get your shit together, NFL. I'm tired of watching these teams and, like, not having good quarterbacks or any... And they have every other good fucking position field, but they can't find a fucking quarterback, man. Come on! Get it together. All right. This was what? I think this was episode 16. Yeah, it was. I told you I'd get my shit together and figure out what it was. All right, episode 16, Medicaid Sports Talk, yo. Thanks so much for listening. Um, I appreciate all five of you probably. So uh, hope you all have a good Monday. Love you all. Peace out.